All right, let's try this. Hey, it is Monday, March 16th, and this is real weird. Uh, completely empty room. Uh, looking around here, I can show you guys real quick since, uh, you know, we have times together. Uh, so we have uh, room and desks, uh, and over here, room and desks, and so, uh, yee. So let's give this a try and see what happens. Hopefully I didn't make any of you uh, throw up just a second ago and I was uh, spinning that around. I <laughs> apologize. All right, starting a clock. So I have this in front of me, so I have some idea of how long I've been going, I guess. In theory, I could look up there also, we'll find out. Anyway, all right, one, happy coronavirus week. Uh, I mean, we're trying to make the best of it as best we can. Things seem to be changing nonstop. It was quite the interesting weekend reading the news. Uh, but anyway, happier things. Let's talk about Greek mythology. Well, no, not yet. Camp to come, so. Uh, if you've turned in money, we will be getting that back to you. That's one of the things coming up in the future when we come back. Uh, if you turned in checks, we'll get money to you. We'll figure out stuff from there. If you did not hear before, officially, Camp to come, so is canceled. Uh, trust me, no matter how sad you think you are, I am more sad. Uh, because you only have what you think you were going to miss. I know what you're missing, and it broke me. Uh, so, But there is nothing we can do at this point. All right, I'm gonna to try to be creative on social media. I have some ideas. So if you're not on social media, that's fine. But if you are, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm gonna try and come up with a couple different ideas uh, to try and interact with you guys. Because again, uh, not being around you for a long period of time is gonna drive me insane. So I'm gonna try and figure out what I can do to interact with you. So I have a couple of thoughts I'm gonna try and throw out there and we'll see what happens. Um, I have a lot of duet ideas I wanna do. I mean, they're not gonna be like dancing duet. Well, some of them might be. But it might just be just me. Anyway, pay attention. I'll see what I can put out there for you. We'll have some interacting and entertaining each other. Ooh, as an example, uh, the Olympians, the whole uh, Zeus, Hera, Poseidon. Uh, if you want to get five B points for doing that, you can. You can send me a video of you that is recorded on your iPad and you can send it to me. The drawback is uh, you're going to have to be like blindfolded or something so I can tell that you're not just reading it off a piece of paper. Uh, so if you can find a way to prove to me that you're not like reading it off a piece of paper, uh, then you can go through and do the care the Zeus, and we'll practice the, the Zeus, stuff like that, and I'll give you points. Be blindfolded. Or if you want to double it to 10 points, Post it to social media and then send me a link or tag me either Instagram or TikTok or if you have a YouTube page, put it on YouTube. Uh, if you do that, I will double it and give you 10 B points. Um, and then, you know, I do the blindfolding thing for that. You'll make up for it, the fact that you, you know, are putting yourself out there in the world. Uh, and so we'll get a chance to do that one. Hey, yeah, it's, hang on, time out. I'll come back to you guys in a second. Okay, time back in. So... That was Mr. Sturgeon who happened to come by and was seeing me, so I had to stop and talk to him because he saw me like all dressed up. Anyway, back to here. Uh, so the Olympians for B points, you can post it to the, uh, social media, and you'll get a chance to get. I'll give you ten points. Just tag me so I get a chance to see you and stuff like that. I figured that'd be a bit more fun way of trying to do it. So completely up to you if you want to. And then last, I believe your third nine weeks grace we pretty much posted. The quiz from Friday, the Olympians one, is going to be on the fourth nine weeks. So I can't put that in until like Friday of this week because that's when they're extending the closing of grades and stuff like that. So I'm going to make that the first grade coming up. So if you are gone on Friday and did not take the Olympians quiz, you're going to want to go on Socrative. Um, and so I will open up on Socrative, uh, so you should be able to do it that way, um, and then type in your answers and then submit it that way, and then um, you should be good to go. So I imagine I'll try and do multiple choice. But anyway, I gotta figure that out still. So anyway, go on Socrative. Uh, I'll try to get that set up for you guys and we'll figure something out. Yay, all right, let's continue on from there. No? All right. <clears throat> I've never done this before, this whole trying to teach to an empty classroom thing, so we're going to see what happens. I'm used to like interacting with kids and it's an empty room. All right, roll with me. I'm trying to wrap my brain around things here. So, we talk, so this is normally where I would stop and like ask you guys, hey, what happened to the first race of mankind? And then you guys would answer, and I like that whole talking back and thing, but I have no one to talk to. I just have a bunch of empty seats, so I guess I can talk to myself like I'm doing right now. That makes it weird. All right. First race of humans got wiped out during the whole big war thing, squash, big monsters and stuff like that. Now that Zeus is king of all the gods and he is now the, the, the Olympian and the top of him and stuff like that, he decides he wants to come up with 
a new race of humans. He liked the idea of having little people to go all squishy squishy on. So he goes and talks to Prometheus, the guy who created the first race of humans. Like, hey, uh, rumor is you created the first race of humans. I would like to also create a race of humans. So how about you help me out? Prometheus says no. He goes, here's my issue with it. Uh, I can't really be doing more than one thing at a time. You're help having me help you set up this whole new government thing with all these new jobs and like that. He's like, I don't really have time to try and go through and, and set up the people and create them too and then stay on top of that. So I think you're gonna have to like make a choice. Do you want me to make humans or do you want me to help with the government? And Zeus is like, all right, you making humans is great, but the government's probably more important, so I don't wanna mess things up. So you keep doing that. And instead, I will find somebody else. And he figures, if I can't get Prometheus, I will get the next best thing to Prometheus, which is going to be Epimetheus. So he goes and talks to Epimetheus. And he's like, and I guess he had not really quite figured out what kind of person Epimetheus was yet, or maybe he was just very trusting. But he goes and talks to Epimetheus. He's like, hey, uh, Epimetheus, I want you to make the second race of humans since your brother Prometheus made the first race. Uh, and I want to see how well you can do with it. So you just cannot screw up this race of humans. Uh, and so the problem is all creatures got destroyed during the big war. There's no more like mooses or elephants or antelopes. There's nothing. It's all gone. So what I want you to do is you're going to remake all the creatures on the world and humans, but realize humans are the most important one. That's who I want you to like spit all your time into. And Epimetheus goes, all right, I can do this. And so Zeus gives him this giant uh, thing of like Play-Doh. And he's like, you know, says, which I want you to do is you take this Play-Doh and you can squish it out into the shape of things and you sprinkle on some magic dust, you throw it down into the world and it poof, activates and becomes those creatures. So you can make whatever creatures you want to and then make humans. And Epimetheus decides that he's gonna, for the first time ever, try and make a big kid decision and he's not going to make humans first. He's going to practice making animals, and then he's going to end up making humans last. And he's like, this way I don't screw things up. Zeus gives him this giant tackle box, and this giant tackle box is filled with all of these different things. Uh, you're going to have like a thing of like claws, then eyeballs, and fur, and noses, and fangs, and, and wings, and the idea being is that if you make a creature, you reach in there, pull it out, put it on there, squishy, 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 good to go. So Epimetheus begins making like the first thing. He's like, all right, I'm going to start eating. Grab some Play-Doh. Goes like really, 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 really. Squishes it all out. Grabs in there. Pulls out some scales. Like <laughs> puts them on there. Grabs two big old things. Tink, tink. Sticks them in there. Makes a snake. Throws it down there. This is where I miss all you guys. Like normally as I'm creating these different creatures, you guys be like yelling at me. That's it. And you sell whatever you think it is. And some could like yell a worm. And I'm like, what kind of worm has fangs on? We all get to laugh at you. So just imagine that some kid yelled out worm when I said that. And then we all get to laugh at that kid. But that kid's not here. Sadness. Back. So after he makes that, he's like, all right, let's try again. There's another one. Rolls out a little worm. Puts... Uh, four legs on it this time. Again, puts a big thing of scales, puts the big teeth on there, throws it down to earth, makes a lizard. Again, this is where some kid would yell out some random thing like a dog. We would all laugh at them because kids are special. And then from there, he's like, all right, I've got this down. Let's start making bigger things. So he ends up grabbing another, like the yellow Play-Doh and puts some orange in it and like squishes it and like grabs like some big long legs and grabs the head and he's like, whoop, it's like a little tail on the back of it, makes a giraffe, throws it down there. Grabs a big thing of gray Play-Doh, makes a giant like hot air balloon of it, puts little tree stumps on the bottom of it, puts a thing on the front, and gives like a little tail in the back and then gives it a long tail in the front and then grabs the head and is like ears and makes an elephant, throws it down. Having a really good time, making all of these different creatures, throwing them down to earth, chucky, 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 chucky. Down they go to earth, things are going great. And he's finally starting to run out, like all the Play-Doh is almost out. He's got down to almost like nothing left in the little thing. And he's like, nailed it, I finally did the right. And then realizes he forgot to make people. So Epimetheus freaks out. He's like, oh my God, I forgot to me. So he starts going in there, like squishes out a quick human. Squishy, 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 squishy. He's like, all right, uh, let's give it some special abilities. So he reaches in there, like scrapes, and I was like, let's give it the ability to at least see in the dark. That'd be kind of cool. And he goes in like the little eyeball part, and he's like, eyeball, eyeball, eyeball. All of the good eyeballs are taken. All they're left like these really basic eyeballs that can't see in the dark, don't even have good vision. He's like, uh, good enough. Puts them on there. He's like, well, I'll give them claws. So they like, rawr, and they like run and attack things. So he goes on like a little claw thing. He's like, grow, grow, grow. And all the good claws are gone. The only thing left is like claw dust. 
So he pulls out some claw dust and like wipes it on there. Wipey, 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 which is why we don't have good claws and have these little things there. Same thing happens with teeth. When he gets to the fur, he's like, I'm gonna cover them in fur like little bears. They stay warm in the whip, but then the fur is gone and ends up just sort of like smearing some fur like on the top of the head. A couple of guys at the beach, he smears it on their back. Uh, and so you end up getting, see again, like that's a great joke. And you have like the five kids who understand and making fun of like the furry guys at the beach. And like they get all laughy. But here, there's no one here to laugh at my jokes. How am I supposed to be hilarious if no one's laughing? I hope you're laughing at home. I mean, I'm laughing, but still. And so puts the fur onto him and stuff like that, throws him down and creates this race of humans. Problem is, this race of humans, uh, they have no special abilities. We have uh, horrible fingers and, uh, and, and claws and teeth and hair because Epimetheus, the god of idiots, made us last. But at least we got made. But this is how the Greeks explain the fact that humans had no really special abilities because of us being made by him. But we're now made and things are good. So Zeus start setting up sacrifices. And here's how sacrificing worked for all for them. So once humans are created and they're thrown down to earth, Zeus comes and confronts all these people. And he's like, all right, little tribe of humans, come to me. And, and the humans come up to him. And he finds like, meets them in like a cave or something like that. And he goes, all right, so here's what I want to do. I want to set up a thing called sacrificing. And he was like, ooh, what's sacrificing? And he goes, well, here's how sacrificing is going to work. Anytime you want something from the gods, you are going to take an animal or whatever it might be, and you're going to like cut it open and offer it up to the gods, to us, as, and then ask whatever you want from us, and then we will give you guys favors. And it works for us because it's sort of like a popularity vote. This is our version of social media. The more of these sacrifices a god gets, the more popular they are, the more power they have over other gods, the more they get to flex on them and stuff like that. And then we will do good things for you when you sacrifice to us. It becomes like this symbiotic relationship, fancy science word. And the humans go, oh, okay, well, how do we go about doing a sacrifice? He goes, well, as an example, and he picks up a cow and puts it down in front of him. He goes, take this cow. Let's go ahead and sacrifice this cow, and I'll show you how it works. And he was like, ooh, all right. So what happens? So he goes, well, sacrifice, and you're going to take this cow and separate it into two piles. And then I'm going to come back after you've separated into two piles. I'm going to give you some time to work on it. You're a pretty special group of people. And then once you've done that, and then I will pick one pile for me, and then one pile you guys get to keep. Time out. Uh, for those of you who have siblings, older or younger, it's similar to like if your parents ever give you like one candy bar and said you have to split the candy bar. And so one kid gets to split it and then like break the two halves and then the other kid gets to pick which one because that way you can't have the older one like break the two parts and be like, I get this one and you get this one. And so one of you breaks it and one get, same thing here. Zeus says, you make the two piles, I'll pick which pile I want to get. So the humans begin separating the cow into its four cow pile bits. The first thing they rip off all the skin and they put it over the sides. So they have a big pile of leather. After that, they then take all the meat that is off. So all the meaty, gooey, eaty, delicious, hamburger bits, they throw them over into a pile. Then they take all the bones and they put all the bones into a third pile. And then you have one thing left, which is like all the fat and organs and icky bits that are not going to be used. So they have these four piles, and they're trying to figure out where to put them together to see who gets which one, Zeus and them. Well, humans, when they first see these different piles, they get all excited. Because one, they end up taking one of the big like femur bones from the cow, and one of them like walks over to his friend, and he's like, hey, Joey. And he takes the big femur bone, and he's like, what? And he's like, whack, and hits his friend in the head, and knocks him down. And he's like, ho, ho, a wacky stick. And he's like, we definitely want to keep the wacky sticks. So let's put that over there for ourselves, and we'll try to keep that one. And then, if you're unfamiliar with it, fat, the stuff that they pull off between the meat and the bones, fat is full of oil. And if you've ever seen oil on the road, like in the summertime, the fall, when the sunlight hits oil, it looks like a sparkly little rainbow, which is why I made it look all rainbowy there. And so fat, if, or if you ever uh, go out and get like a steak or, or chicken before it gets cooked, uh, it looks like a rainbow. It'll have like little rainbow stripes through it because it's the, the rainbow oils that are in fat. So the humans get all excited about this rainbow fat. They're like, oh, rainbow fat. Like, we want that too. Because you can, like, pick it up and it's like a rainbow snowball. And like, you can throw it at your friend and, like, splat and rainbows everywhere. They're like, rainbow is the best thing. So the humans decide they want these two to keep. And they don't care about the other ones because there's no fun in, like, wearing the leather and the meat and stuff like that. 
problem is, as soon as they make this decision, Prometheus, who's off doing Prometheusian things, running the government, his little alarm goes off and he freaks out. He's like, oh my God, humans are being stupid. And so he decides to sneak down and go into the cave when Zeus is not looking and he confronts the humans. He's like, hey, um, humans. And they're like, yeah, what's up? He goes, so is Zeus setting up sacrifice with you guys? And they're like, he is. And you would not believe how cool this is. Look at this stick. And they're like, what? And they're like, whack! And hits Joey in the head again. Joey's like, ah, and falls down. And he's like, see? And then look at this. And they pick up a handful of the guts and they're like, dodge it! And they throw it at Prometheus. He's like, what? It goes all over his face. Prometheus is like, what is wrong with you idiots? And they're like, oh, we're just like our creator. And he's like, makes sense. So he's like, all right, you guys are going to want this outer cow cover fur, cow fur, and you can use it to make coats and look really cool to impress the ladies. You're also going to want the meat because you can turn it into steaks and steaks are delicious. So because of that, these are the two you want. The other ones, they just look fun, but they're useless. But you can't let Zeus know you want those two because Zeus is kind of a jerk and he'll take the best stuff for himself. Their human's like, oh, that sounds like big brain stuff. We're not ready for that. And he was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I know you're not ready. So he's like, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to have to trick Zeus into picking the wrong stuff. Like, ooh, how do we do that? And he was like, watch, here's how we do it. So you're going to take the meat and you're going to take the fur, turn the fur inside out. So you have the icky side on the outside and the fur on the inside. And you take the meat and you plop it down on top. And the human's like, oh, it looks like the cow stepped on a landmine. He's like, exactly. And then you take all the bones and you're going to make like a little teepee out of it like this. And then you dribble all the fat on top of it. And then all the humans are like, oh, rainbow sticks. And they get all excited. And he's like, exactly, rainbow sticks and exploded cow. Zeus, when he comes in, he's going to see the rainbow sticks and choose those for himself and make you take the other pile, which is the one you want. And the humans are like, but we want rainbow sticks. But he's like, slaps him. He's like, no. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, right. Forgot. Impressing the ladies and, and steak. He's like, exactly. He's like, now don't tell anyone I was here. And then Prometheus sneaks out. Doo, 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 and out he goes. Humans wait for Zeus to show back up. Eventually he walks into the little cave where they are and he's like, all right, I'm here now. So let's talk to each other. What are you? Oh, is it, did that cow eat a hand grenade? And the humans are like, oh no, it's disgusting. He's like, is that a pile of rainbow sticks? I'm like, it is a pile of rainbow sticks. He was like, oh, well, if you have a pile of rainbow sticks and this ugly, disgusting, exploded cow, obviously the gods are going to get the rainbow sticks because this is beautiful, like the gods. You guys are going to get this thing because that's ugly, like you. And the human's like, that, that feels like an insult. He's like, don't worry about it. It is. And I'm like, oh, okay. He goes, fine. So you guys grab yours, get out of here. Every time you sacrifice from now on, you give this to the gods, and you keep that for yourself, and that'll be how the agreement works. Shake on it, and the human's like, okay, and they shake. Shaky, 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 and he puts them on the bottom, and they go running out. Giggle, giggle, and they go running out through a big pile of leather coats and hamburgers. Zeus gets all excited, goes over to pick up the rainbow sticks. He's like, oh, you stupid humans. He's like, I got rainbow sticks. The gods are going to be so... But when he picks them up, it just dissolves in his hand blah, 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 and like falls everywhere, and like slides them. He's like, oh, and he's like, this is disgusting. What? And he realizes he got tricked. He's like, there's no way humans were smart enough because they were made by Epimetheus. Only one person is smart enough to trick me. And that person? Prometheus. And Zeus realizes that Prometheus went behind his back and tricked him. So he goes and confronts Prometheus and says, listen, you went behind my back and did a thing with the humans that you knew you were not supposed to do. That's once. The second time you do it, I'm going to kill you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Prometheus is like, I understand what you're saying, but that was the thing that needed to be done, because if not, they were probably going to die off. And Zeus is like, fine, I hear your words, but the next time it happens, ya did. So here's how sacrificing works, now that we have it established. In Greek mythology, they, they did do sacrificing, but you did not sacrifice people. You would only sacrifice food anytime you wanted to sacrifice to the gods. So anytime you have like a special, like a cow you had killed or a fish or something like that, you would take the meat and whatever outside skin for yourself and then the bones and excess bits you would then put over to a small pile and you would say a prayer over it and offer it to the gods. You could also do this if you were wanting a favor of the gods. 
Let's say uh, that I want Joey Jojo to fall in love with me because Joey Jojo is the most adorable person ever. In that case, I would pray to Aphrodite. Or if my crops were getting ready to come in, I want to make sure I have good crops this year, I would pray to Demeter. If I was going to be getting married soon and I wanted to make sure... See, this is where I miss being able to like say the question and you guys get to respond to me. Like here you guys are like are sitting at home and you're probably like playing Minecraft. This is playing on the side and you're not paying attention to me whatsoever. But in class, like we're having a communication. Or maybe this is like the first day and you guys are just like sitting there staring at me the whole time, like we're bonding. Wait, well, you know, I can like stare into right there. Oh uh, I don't know. You know what? I miss being able to talk to you guys. So anyway, you sacrifice whatever God you have a question to. So let's say we want someone to fall in love with us, so we're going to sacrifice to Aphrodite. What you would do is take like a bowl of honeycomb in the morning, and you would go, Oh, mighty Aphrodite, I want you to make Joey Jojo fall in love with me because he is so adorable. And you would sort of like shake it a little bit, and you put it outside your back door on the back porch. The idea being, if the gods grant your wish, they would show up, eat or take away whatever is in that bowl, and then once it was empty, that's how you know your, your wishes were granted. You would go out and check it the next day, and if there was still some food in there, that means maybe your wish was kind of granted. If it was still completely full, it means you were completely out of luck. If it was completely empty, Joey Jojo was gonna be yours. So the issue is, we know these gods are all make-believe, they're fake, but sometimes the bowl would be empty. So the question becomes, how is it our bowl could be empty if the gods were not real? And again, this is where like we get to have a conversation with each other. I guess you just have me talking straight at you, which takes all the fun out of it, but whatever. Essentially, animals. And so the Greeks realized the fact that sometimes you put your bowl of honeycomb out there and like a little raccoon would come running out there and, like, rah, 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 and the raccoon would eat your bowl of honeycomb. But even if you were to open your back door and step out there and see a little honey, little raccoon eating your honey, going like, ar, 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 and like looking up at you, and you're like, oh, raccoon, and you boot it, that would be bad. Because the, once again, the Greeks believed that gods could shapeshift. And if Aphrodite was going to grant your wish, she would take the form of an animal to do it. Because she's not going to show up like out there as like a beautiful Aphrodite in a robe and just have this like gorgeous woman sitting on your back porch like ar, 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 eating from it. That would be awkward. Instead, to make it seem more normal, she takes form of raccoon and then she goes out there and she's eating it. Or maybe it's like a homeless guy and you go out there and there's like homeless Fred and homeless Fred's like ah, ah, ah and he's out there eating your honeycomb and you're like homeless Fred and you're like ah and you go to kick homeless Fred. Problem is again, the Greeks would believe that every once in a while Aphrodite could take the form of homeless Fred and when you go to kick him to get rid of him, that would be bad because that would be of course Aphrodite in the form of homeless Fred and that would lead to the bad stuff from there. So that's sort of how they believed in sacrificing. So for them, sacrifices equaled popularity. That's why like Aphrodite would try to make Joey Jojo fall in love with you because if she could do that, that gives her more that gets her like higher ranking, sort of like social media likes. And so the, they f truly believed the gods would grant your wishes because it made them more popular. So then the question becomes, who is the most popular god? Well, Zeus was not an idiot. So when he set up sacrifices, he told the humans, every time you sacrifice to any god, whether it's going to be Poseidon because you're going to go swimming, or Apollo because you want to be all attractive, or Artemis because you're going to go hunting, you're going to sacrifice to the god that you want, and then you have to do a smaller sacrifice to the king of the gods. And if you're going to end up doing like Ares because you're going to war, big sacrifice to Ares, small sacrifice to king of the gods. He goes, whoever the king of the gods are, you do a small one to that person as well, like a thank you for being the top dog. So because of that, Zeus manages to guarantee he is always the most popular god. He is the top one because of that little loophole into it. So he was always telling the other gods, it's not my fault that I'm king of all the gods. It's because I'm the most popular. They're like, well, you're only the most popular because you're the king of the gods. He's like, hey, I didn't make the rules. And I'm like, yes, you did. And he's like, well, ah, never mind. He's like, whatever, and threw a hand in their face. The second most popular god, it depended. If it was like crops time, it'd probably be Demeter. If it was June, you're looking at Hera. And so if it was February 14th, Aphrodite. 
And so it just sort of depend on which one it was. So a lot of times it would rotate from God to God as the second most popular. Zeus was always the top, and then below him were the other ones. All right. So for tomorrow, I'm going to give you a thing to read. If you don't read it, I mean, I figure you guys have free time. It's a fairly fun story. It's on my website. It's going to be about uh, Hades kidnapping a girl. I'm going to give you a breakdown about it tomorrow to try and help a little bit. But I figure, hey, if it helps, go take a look at it. It's called Seasons. Uh, it gives you the longer version of it and it gives you a bit more details. Tomorrow I'm going to give you the shorter-ish version of it that goes into it. But to try and help you out, go take a look at Seasons about uh, Hades going and, and kidnapping a girl, which is always fun. So creation of the season story, it's going to be down here. All right. I think that's pretty much it. So we made it through day one. Uh, only, I have no idea how many more days. But day one's done. So high five. Um, and then check you tomorrow. Be safe. Have fun in your other classes.